ChatteractCoach.com. Tailor your technique to your patient population. You can adjust your FACO technique to the type of cases you get the most. So we've got an anonymous guest surgeon here from Australia, and this surgeon mostly gets patients who have eh, 2 plus NS, maybe 2 to 3 plus NS. So patients tend not to have very dense cataracts, and this surgeon has tailored his or her technique towards this exact patient population. And that means in this case here, what are we going to do? Let's help get that nucleus prolapse right there out of the capsule bag. A little bit of hydrodelineation. Look at that separation of the endonucleus from the epinuclear shell. A little more viscoelastic to protect the central coronary endothelium. A little more viscoelastic going behind the nucleus so it doesn't fall back in the capsule bag. I like it. Video, of course, is sped up at three times normal speed. And fake a probe going inside the eye. And let's see, where's our chopper? Chopper going inside. And perhaps it's going to be a chopper out the bat. Let's see. Fake a probe going in the eye. Chopper going around the back. Boom. Very nice. So flip and chop technique. This is a very appropriate technique for your average two to maybe three plus nuclear sclerotic cataract. Fantastic. But you may say, wait a minute, though. I'm in this part of the country or this part of the world, and my normal is four plus NS. And I normally get brunescent cataracts every week. I get dense white cataracts every week. And I get root beer, Coca-Cola type cataract. Okay, great. Tailor your technique to that population. So if this surgeon gets a population that's kind of like what I see in Beverly Hills, I like the idea of doing this technique because you've tailored your technique to what works best for this patient. Now, if you've got a patient population that's different, you should do the same thing. Tailor your technique to that population that you serve. And that, of course, is, makes the most sense. Now, the backbones of the surgery are still the same. Look, good draping, all the lashes out of the way, lid margin sequestered. The iris is parallel to the, the floor of the room. The eyes in primary, the incisions look good. So all that's the same. Nucleus removal is going to be tailored to the patient. But cortex here, the same bimanual technique that a lot of people use across the world. That works great. So again, tailor the technique that you do to your patient population. And I really have to emphasize that because that's a very important point. Here in Los Angeles, you can have multiple different populations. When I taught the residents for 22 years at the county hospital, that county hospital, it was brunescent and dense white cataracts were the name of the game. And if we did a day of surgery of 10 cataracts, at least half of them would need tripan blue dye. Now contrast that to my Beverly Hills population, which Beverly Hills is a fancy part of Los Angeles, and patients don't have such bad disease in general because they present much earlier in the course of the cataract spectrum. Well, I use tripan blue dye in Beverly Hills less than 10% of the time. So in one hospital in Los Angeles, 50% of the time, in our surgery center in Beverly Hills, less than 10% of the time. So there's obviously a difference. And so I want to emphasize that point to you. Be like this Australian surgeon, whoever he or she is. Beautiful technique, which is appropriate for your patient population. So when you watch these cataract coach videos, ask yourself, what is it that I normally see in my own clinic? And the, how should I tailor my technique specifically to my patient population? If you have absolutely brunescent rocks, you better run that MSICS procedure, right? That small incision manual extraction is a magic trick. But if you have patients who are like this, in this video, 2 plus NS, yeah, listen, flip and chop is like magic. Get that nucleus out of the bag, get a quick chop going in, and you're done. Just make sure you can deliver on the refractive part because the patients who have the 2 plus NS and the fancy neighborhood sometimes are more demanding with the refractive outcome. I literally have had patients who are Plano minus a half at 180 and the patient says, yeah, it's okay, but when's it going to be really sharp? And they're literally reading 20, 20 letters or six, six letters on the eye chart. Because their refraction is Plano minus a half at 180. 
So that's a much higher standard. Whereas you get a patient at a county hospital here in Los Angeles who had a brunescent or white cataract and the pre-op vision was hand motion and the post-op vision can be even 20, 40. And the patient is so thankful and so grateful. So again, you need to tailor this technique you do for surgery to your patient population, just like you've seen in this video. And I think if you do that, you'll have a really nice outcome and your patient will be happy and you'll enjoy doing surgery more.